uh, and I'm excited to speak on uh, Llama agents. Um, so first off, um, I'm Andre. I'm um, currently a founding software engineer slash machine learning engineer or AI engineer, whatever title of the week it is, uh, at Llama Index. Um, I've been here at Llama Index for about 10 or 11 months. I work predominantly on the open source side of things with Logan who leads our open source uh, uh, things. And so I maintain Llama Index, the Python framework. We also have a TypeScript framework by work on the Python one. And most recently, I also co-authored and maintain Llama Agents, which is um, mostly what we will talk about and demo today. Um, and Llama Agents is essentially a, a, frame, a framework for building multi-agent systems in a sort of uh, with a with, with a lens to production. Um, and essentially what that means for us is building out these agents and other um, uh, components as services that are sort of brokered in terms of communication with message queues and other um, engineering sort of techniques. Uh, yes, uh, and, and Amir, if you like, I'm fine if you guys want to just have this be super interactive and like folks just like, you know, pause me and ask me any questions at any, any given moment. Sounds if good. that's okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll, uh, people can put questions in the chat, but at the end, we'll, we'll have a, we'll have a more interactive session. Thing. Cool. Um, so just a little bit before, uh, more about me. So before I joined Llama Index, I worked at a couple other um, startups, Integrate AI based out of Toronto, Metaverse Mind Lab also based out of Toronto, um, mostly working on machine learning uh, and a little bit of LLM stuff uh, before as well. And that's just some boring schooling that I went to University of Waterloo for stats and probability. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, I think I ended off our chat, or sorry, my talk at Tatnet, Amir, with this sort of uh, infographic of Llama agents. It's just a sort of uh, promotion. Again, we'll be talking more about this, but we just recently hit, I think, 1.4K stars. Um, and we haven't really done any sort of push yet because we were actually waiting on a, a core component uh, to be released within the main framework, Llama Index, which we will next be integrating into Llama agents that should make building agents uh, and executing uh, the multi-agent systems a lot easier. And what that is, is uh, workflows, which is what we just released this week within the main Llama index library. And essentially, it's a new way to orchestrate or build your LLM application. So you would design it as a workflow. And every workflow has this run method. And it, it goes from sort of like a um, like a DAG sort of pipeline approach to a more um, event-driven architecture approach. So uh, essentially what's happening is that every step, uh, and you can say like the run is the initial step, will throw down a, a, an event uh, with some context. Um, and so once these events get dispatched, all these steps are just like listening to events and whatever events it's subscribed to, um, you know, if that event comes down the pipes, then it will invoke its step function. Uh, and you do all this until it's done. Um, the, the nice thing about this, of course, is it handles async uh, workflows, but also you can like do things step by step. Uh, and so um, we're really excited about this workflow um, abstraction and very excited to see what folks build with it within the main framework. And we'll be integrating into Llama agents in the next uh, little bit. So um, what we will be doing is probably be making a bigger push towards Llama agents um, uh, with workflows in the near future. Um, for today's talk, I, I haven't done that work yet of like migrating some stuff over to workflow. So it will, it will be using the older stuff, but um, nevertheless, the core components and, and, and fundamentals that we're going to be using in Llama agents today will stay the same. It's just changing this out uh, and using this as the orchestrator. But all of that hopefully will make more sense as they sort of get into it. Um, so what I want to do next is I want to quickly review, and I don't want to spend too much time on this because I think folks here are, are quite familiar um, given 
the LLM problem solver's name. So I think you guys have already talked to, in extensive detail about agent, agent stuff. So I wanna like just, just quickly review this and then just to level set us. And then my sort of perhaps ambitious goal is to demo building um, uh, uh, a multi-agent system with a Gradio front end uh, in this workshop. Super um, lightweight, uh, but we'll see. Hopefully the demo gods don't bite me. <laughs> um, sorry, some questions. Uh, should we answer some of the questions now? Uh, keep going. I can uh, relay them as we. Okay. Do. Okay. Sure. Okay. So some core agent concepts. We've got, of course, tool use being one of them, right? Um, right. So we prompt an LLM to perform a task, and uh, it's we equip it with some tools, and it gives us a payload to make a call to that tool. Uh, and of course, that exists within Llama Index and like other LLM frameworks. Uh, we also have some memory modules. So here's just a simple composable memory module, uh, which is like just composition of like a primary chat memory buffer, plus some additional like longer term secondary memory where perhaps you've got a vector storage of memory and you're just doing a retrieval based on what was stored in that uh, memory and injecting it into the chat memory. Um, just through the system prompt. So that's one sort of example of how to handle handle memory. And the other core agent concept is planning and reflection, um, where that sort of manifests for us, at, at least in the planning bit for Llama agents is in the orchestration layer that sits in a concept that we call uh, control plane, which I'm a little bit regretting the name to recognize. I think it's probably better uh, named as like an exchange or something like that. Um, yeah, so these are, again, the core agent concepts that I think everyone here is well aware of. Uh, and it's just a matter of how these things sort of project within Llama Index and Llama Agents. What might be... Oh. So maybe uh, this is a good break point to talk about the question. So uh, one, of the, one of the things that is interesting in agentic systems is that a lot of the time the policy involves some sort of a routing or branching. So how does that happen here uh, in the context of workflows or other pieces that you have? Yeah, so in terms of, let's see. Um, so let me make sure I understand the question. In terms of branching, are we talking about like potential conditional steps where, you know, given some uh, condition, you might run a different step. You might run step A versus step B. Is that- um, I can thinking? clarify. Right, because I asked the question. So let's say the blue step, right, which is, I think, uh, you know, the light blue one. So after that, where the pink step is. So let's say at the level of pink step, there's multiple steps, right? Say th there are three steps. And then based on the outcome of the blue step, you can choose either of the pink steps, right? Like if they're called P1, P2, P3. So yeah. that kind of routing is what I'm thinking about. Yeah, that's nice. And yeah, that's um, so admittedly, like we're still fleshing out a lot of these things, though in my head, it's that it that pattern is definitely doable even today. Um, so essentially, what you would be doing with workflows um, is you'd be just decorating any sort of function. Um, so if you have P1, P2, P3, you decorate all those functions with the step decorator. And one thing that we do pass into uh, uh, each of these decorators or um, each of these step functions is the context, right? Mm -hmm. And each step can write to context. So if this if this blue step writes in the context, the condition, then these P1, P2, P3 can just be checking for those conditions. And if that condition is satisfied for PX, then, then you know, execute. Otherwise, like all the other ones would return. I think that's definitely one way to, to handle it, uh, though. Yeah, yeah, there's probably some other ways that we can build it out to make it a lot more user friendly. But uh, yeah, that's one way it, it could be executed today. Okay, makes sense. Thanks. No worries. All right. So the next question is about you said that you're transitioning to an event driven architecture. Can you expand on that? Like, what 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 is happening now? What kind of architecture do you have now, and why event driven is a better one? <laughs> Yeah, so <clears throat> um, 
I will say again that probably the person who should be, speak to this uh, is is Masi, who just joined us, and he actually was building out um, the open source framework for Haystack. And uh, you know, if you're familiar with Haystack, and we've got a similar thing too, and we were running to similar challenges, uh, it sort of runs through this like pipeline sort of step by step execution um, architecture. And there were just a bunch of edge cases that Daphne Masi can speak more to that were just like sort of um, brushing up against uh, th those abstractions that made things a lot difficult, uh, pretty difficult to for the users to build and for like developers like uh, Masi to maintain. And we were facing that especially as well with pipelines. And one of the things was, for example, loops. Handling loops was uh, a quite a big challenge with our uh, with that abstraction. And with workflows, it, it, it becomes uh, a little bit easier, though it's still not straightforward. Um, it, it becomes a little bit more uh, manageable through this event-driven architecture. Again, I'm probably not the right person to speak on this. Uh, Masi and Logan have been uh, pushing out workflows uh, this past week, uh, but uh, that uh, that was one of the main motivators for us. Right. Sounds like we should bring them to speak as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe in a few weeks, once the workflows are more uh, you know well established. Yeah, or you know, in in probably a week or two, once I've actually uh, got my hands uh, with it and and worked with it in terms of putting it into Llama agents. But yeah, in, in any case, we should bring Masi and Logan to talk here. And, and period. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, I guess related to 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 the event driven architectures, um, one of the like I, I did see in one of the posts that you have that you support, you know, integration with Kafka and things like that. Um, which, which I assume is to you know support this kind of workflow. Um, one thing that we are seeing is that you know there are maybe you will talk about this later, but you know state management is generally a very very important component of a system like this. Uh, and generally speaking, with event driven architectures, it's a lot cleaner to to execute on that. Is that is that how you were thinking about it? Yeah, we're, we're definitely thinking about that and how to best manage state as well as, yeah, state. And we have multiple um, kinds of state to manage, but like, you know, what we, you're, you're right, in terms of like event-driven sort of protocol, um, I, I think there's opportunities to handle this a lot more efficiently. And um, so like, and, and to elaborate, like what we're sort of thinking is like, imagine like a bulletin board of state where um, you've got like a bunch of agentic tasks that are currently running. And you might have like uh, multiple instances of a particular type of agent or agent role. Um, now, it should be the case if you want this thing to be super scalable and efficient, that it doesn't matter which instance of that agent is performing the task, right? It should just be able to download that state from whatever state uh, cache or service that you've got up and running, and then execute, right? And, and then, you know, obviously you get sort of the benefits of like fault tolerancy and redundancy and stuff like that with that. So um, that's something that we are definitely have the eyes towards building. Um, and it's just, we haven't really th uh, thought of yet how to best execute it. Probably we'll have that within two to three weeks. This workflow piece was a thing that we were sort of waiting on to, to help with the orchestration layer. And, and then I guess one of the, the bigger tickets is that state management, but it's a good comment. Okay, maybe we can move on. Sure, thank you. Um, I was there. So yeah, um, a little bit uh, related to what we were just talking about, like the design that we made for Llama agents was um, more, uh, again, uh, eye towards production and scalability. Um, so we kind of view the world going more agentic, obviously in 2024, but and, and beyond. And what that means to us is just like automation through agent systems um, and, and everywhere, right? And it, when you sort of think of that, then if so, if you do subscribe to that thought, then I think what you probably um, believe is that these agent systems will be quite complex um, and handling a bunch of different tasks. And there could be cases uh, in complex scenarios where you might want to uh, get really scalable 
uh, at multi-agent systems, right? And, you know, uh, Amir and I have been sp speaking on this uh, a few times, and the, the, the current frameworks that exist today, they just sort of, uh, I, I believe, um, are building towards more monolithic type of applications versus teasing them out. Uh, and, you know, the benefits of doing that is similar to uh, a monolithic architecture versus a microservice-based architecture, right? Um, and, you know, ease and maintainability, flexibility in, you know, scalability and what you scale. And of course that also, we see that also because of the communication uh, that is brokered by, um, uh, by a message queue uh, and Amir mentioned Kafka, but like essentially what we've got is like, you've got all these agents running and you might also have a human service and these are their own separate services um, running on, you know, whatever server that they want. And they're all communicating to the core concept of uh, uh, Llama agents, which is a control plane, which is acting, acting like the exchange or like the orchestration layer of the task. Uh, they're all sort of communicating through this message queue. And, and the nice thing about that is that like these producers and they don't really need to know about the consumers, right? And you can scale them up uh, as you as you need, right? Whereas if you have like a monolithic approach, then like this whole thing is just one app, right? Exposed by sort of one sort of REST service perhaps. And so if you're getting a bunch of requests and maybe one agent task is a bottleneck, then, you know, it's kind of harder, I think, to, to scale that out. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, this with Llama agents, if if you see the progression of how you could build and deploy with us, we've got uh, some tooling, and of course this is still very early, um, but some tooling that will help you to build uh, locally um, and, and test things out on rapid iteration. So like our server launcher, local, uh, which is a, a local launcher, which you shall see soon hopefully. Uh, and then you know as you're sort of building this out, you might think, okay, I'm ready to deploy the system and, and you want to sort of containerize all your services now, right? And so you can um, test this out and build this on like a Docker Compose uh, orchestration. And then, you know, if you want to advance from there, then you could get into something like Kubernetes. And we've got examples for each of these types of uh, launching mechanisms. Uh, I probably can get through to the Docker Compose version of this, depending on time but I can also just link the Kubernetes where uh, you can just increase a replica set, for example, for any of these agents, and then you just have multiple instances of those agents running up. One of these days, we will get to a point where uh, you can simulate your agents, I hope, uh, and, and these tasks to get a sense of like, you know, the, the performance on, and find bottlenecks on whatever agents are uh, sort of slowing things down for you. Any questions on this slide? I know there were, that was a lot, perhaps. So when I'm looking at this, one thing that comes to mind immediately is the level of complexity involved. So obviously, you're not going to use this if all you want is you know answers from PDFs. Uh, so maybe you can, just to contextualize, maybe you can give an example of where it is appropriate to even get to this level of complexity and then how do you manage the complexity throughout the project because i assume you know there and the beauty of what you're doing is that you're treating this as a bunch of services so you know how does that play into managing the complexity yeah that's a good point like i will say like this probably is time dependent on like on how these um technologies like our stuff and others are are sort of evolving my hope would be that this stuff gets so easy that like, you know, even for um, um, like a chat bot type of just talk to your document thing, it, it could be as simple, not saying that you should do it, but it could be as simple to, to build um, an, uh, an ag agentic system to, do, to handle that. At, at this point in time, what we would simply say is like, okay, you want to chat with your PDF document? Okay, just build a rag pipeline. Uh, and expose it with a, a UI of your choice, right? Create Llama, for example, uh, <laughs> it is one one choice there. Um, and then, yeah, I think the question that you raise on like 
the complex systems and like i guess there was two part to that question amir like what are some examples of complex situations and then the next part of that is like how do you sort of manage the complexity is that right yeah essentially so i mean you know given where things are today you know, there is a there is a barrier of entry given you know the minimal you know complexity that exists in the system where you know the workflow has to be complex enough for this to make sense beyond you know below which you probably should not think about it this way at least in your first few versions uh so that that's one thing like what what is the boundary like at, at what point and i and i understand that that's a line in the sand probably yeah yeah where is that line in the sand um and then the second one was okay assuming that you cross that line on the sand how do you what are the best practices to manage the complexity in that system yeah that's a great question and maybe um i'll, I'll provide an answer to it based on an experience i had at another company that it was an approach that we we took it might not be the approach though i think it was a sensible one and so what we were trying to do was even before like these multi-agent systems were uh, a big thing i think they were just sort of starting up with like auto gpt perhaps as uh, as the first thing at that time but what we were trying to do was automate workflows within and uh i what i mean by workflows here are just like uh, tasks that uh, enterprises complete uh, on like a continual basis. So one application of that was like a help desk where it was a very super, super manual process. But like if you look at the tree of that workflow, it was huge, highly complex, right? And, you know, what we we're trying to say is like we can automate that. Eventually, we're going to be living in a world where that thing is automated, right? And what we were saying was like, okay, in order to manage the uh, complexity of this, we're not going to handle this all at once. You know, we want to get to a point where like 90% of that is automated through an LLM uh, and agentic workflows. But what we'll do is we'll take a small branch, right? Um, that we, we know is like, you know, um, high impact and super repetitive, right? And we'll work on that small branch. And then what we'll do is we'll get that like working, you know, very nicely, you know, add the human in the loop type of things to make sure that it's uh, working to a degree uh, of accuracy that is suitable. And then from there, it's like, okay, let's now, maybe that's like first 5% of that whole process is, is automated. And then like the way that we would handle is like, okay, we're happy with that, confident about this. We get it, we're building our muscle in terms of like, using this stuff because as you said it's very early on it's it's hard to go straight out of the gate 90 percent or more and like folks i don't think would trust it at 90 percent or more at this time so i think you sort of build that muscle slowly you build that trust you learn how to work with it and then you increase uh the workload that you're passing to these uh, agentic systems um if that makes sense yeah i hope that answers your question too Sounds good. So we are halfway through, so maybe we can make some more progress and then we'll stop again. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. I might not get to the demo, but um, so maybe I'll get to like the start of how you would build it. <clears throat> um, here are some the, the core components again uh, of the Llama agents, and this is just a, a simple script of how you would do it. But the core components again are the control plane, which is the uh, the thing that orchestrates the task. So imagine you've got like a multi-agent system, you're just submitting tasks to it. The control plane, it hits the control plane first. So that is, it's the entry point. It then routes the task to whatever sort of service it thinks it needs to go to. Uh, so um, the way in which it orchestrates right now is you can have an agent actually sitting as the orchestrator, or you can have like something more deterministic, which is the pipeline thing that we had before, which is soon to be deprecated in favor of workflows. Um, that are in the latest abstraction. So this is the first main component. This is again, like the sort of brain uh, that's handling the task, it's the entry point. Then you've got the, you know, uh, I'll actually I'll skip to services. These are the, I guess, the constituents of the multi-agent system. So you've got agents that are performing the task. Um, you've got tools that agents are using, which can be also exposed as a service. And then you've also got these, uh, we call human, but probably should be better named as human in the loop service, uh, where essentially you've got uh, tasks that not uh, 
an agent performs, but a human performs, right? So the control plane is sending these subtasks to each of these services, and the way uh, and, and these services are, you know, submitting back their work, finished work, um, through this message queue. And I think there's a bunch of questions, or but I mean, I'm just uh, waiting for you. Yeah, to, yeah, I keep going. I know I'll interrupt you. Okay, so <clears throat> now um, I think Langraph. And, and yeah, I know this is a Lang chain, a, a Llama index talk, but I'll talk about Langraph. Langraph just I think was recently released, and I think they're the very first uh, agent IDE um, a, a experience. And I definitely think this is something that obviously is lacking still in Llama agents. Um, the future for us, so I believe it is this sort of uh, the analogy that I'm playing in my head might be a wrong one, but I feel like there's probably an opportunity for like a Databricks type of uh, experience. Uh, so for me, what Databricks sort of did was they helped data scientists collaborate um, with their notebooks in a sort of serverless approach, like, you know, collaborate notebooks in the Databricks server. And like, I don't need to think of spinning up any sort of, as the data scientist, right, uh, to spin up the servers to, to make that work. I think there's probably a similar uh, a type of experience for building agents. Um, especially within our framework that is so geared towards these uh, components being distributed as microservices. Uh, but yeah, that's future, future speak. Where we're at today is that, yes, you had to write Python code. Um, we're probably going to progress that into Python code and then sort of like YAML code through some sort of Kubernetes templates that you can um, um, sort of deploy, um, and, and then hopefully some IDE on top of that. But yeah, so in this script here, you've got your message queue. So we've got abstractions to uh, better message queues. Right now we've got the simple message queue and this is definitely, it's not something you should go in production with. We just built that as a means for you to like quickly run something and test. We've got abstractions now to Redis. We've got abstraction to integration, sorry, to Kafka. Um, also RabbitMQ and we've got AWS, um, message queue coming soon that that will use SQS and SNS. So that's the message queue. Here, these, these next two uh, boxes are your services that you would be building. Um, so that's a human in the loop service. This is your agent service. And the way for, like, if you think about agents is that Llama Index has toolings to build uh, your agents, of course. And what we want to do with Llama agents is allow users to leverage their agents that they build with Llama index. Um, so this is something that you would, this is a Llama index uh, code here. You So you essentially build your Llama index agent, and then this component here, this abstract abstraction is a Llama agents abstraction. Uh, so essentially you're just wrapping your agent in a service. Um, and then finally, you just hook that up into your uh, control plane. And then you launch. Um, you know what? I don't know if I'll get into uh, the demo. I'm just looking at the time. Maybe is it better, perhaps, Amir, what do you think in terms of uh, time, just uh, just doing a more interactive Q&A? So or do you want to do about it? 25 minutes, so. Uh, OK. We can actually do it. Yeah. <laughs> OK, let's do it. I'll try to answer some of the questions in the chat as we go. Uh, so. OK, so let's see. Um, this is now, uh, I, I did start a new project. So my point here was to actually show you how to build this. And again, uh, please uh, uh, accept my apology here that it's probably not the most like user-friendly way of doing it, but we're still not there yet. But essentially the way that you would do it is you like you would build a, a new project, right? And um, the way I like to organize it is in, in terms of its, services and it's comp like uh, its reason of being within the multi-agent system so i'll put in here core services right and this is a module i'll put another one of like uh agent services um, andre if it is helpful for us to read which i think is uh, oh. we, yeah, this needs to be bigger yeah thank you is that better for you guys okay and then the other thing is i call additional services Okay, so if I go back to this 
talk here. Uh, you know, like we have the control plane and the message queue will go in the core services and then the uh, agent will go in the agent services and then like these human in the loop services are put in like the additional services. <laughs> That's just sort of the way I've been organizing these builds. And the reason why I'm putting it in a single um, package here, and this might not be the best approach for uh, depending on your situation, is just for like demo purposes, I can put this all in one Docker file. So like all of these things are just gonna be pulling off um, one Docker image, and I'll just be using a, a separate command to deploy an agent service, a message queue, et cetera. Hopefully that makes sense for folks. Um, but yeah, let's build this out. So let's, let's do a message queue. Bye. Uh, oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, control plane. And let's see. I do have here another window that you, you can't see. I'm just going to copy and paste some stuff I had before so that I know it works. And also, I get really nervous when I had to work some stuff on the fly. <laughs> um okay do, 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 do. here you go uh -huh. so um essentially what i'm going to be adding here is the uh one second the terminal let's go here and um, let's add our llama agents Rabbit MQ. So this will be our message queue. And what else do we need here? Uh, um, of course, I need all my agents. That's added. Poetry add some other dependencies. We I'm going to use OpenAI. I don't think I need that. So these are just some llama index integrations that we need so we've got llms open ai we've got uh agent uh, integration as well for that's coming from the llama index and again it's an open ai agent that we'll be using okay and i also had some other thing here of a util Again, this is just like for purely for demo purposes. You probably guys here have uh, way better ways of organizing this uh, than I do, but uh, hopefully what we'll, we'll do get to is a point where it works. Okay, so where did my message queue stuff go? Did I put it in? It's in control. <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, 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 uh. Um, problem solvers. Demo? Okay, cool. So um, if we read here, what I'm going to be using is a local version of rather MQ. I'll just spin it up from a Docker uh, image. And I'm just passing in um, the components, uh, the environment variables for it to actually connect to it. And sorry, what was that, Amir? Can you make examples of how to use a one that will use an, a rag? Is that right? Uh, like keep keep going. I'll I'll, uh, I'll answer in there. Sure. Okay. I thought that was a question from you. That's why. Yeah, that's good. I'll interrupt you when when there are questions. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, and the one I was doing was actually going to be. Um, a a silly one that I've done in the past, and it's actually on our uh, on our website. But essentially, it's going to be this Pig Latin translation thing. Uh, so in that agentic system, what what we have is two agents. One agent will um, first I believe remove the ay suffix, and then the second agent will um, correct the first position of the character, the first character. That was actually the same 
boyish example that I had in the TapNet talk I gave uh, a month ago, I mean, if you recall. So LLM problem solvers. Demo. Okay, so these two don't exist yet. I'll copy and paste them soon. But yeah, let me talk about the control plane here. So, uh, and this is uh, not that. And the nice thing is I probably should just be doing this and importing it, but let me just do this. Uh, and so folks don't be as repetitive as me in here, okay? When you do this at home. Okay. Okay, so what I need to do is when I'm setting up the control plane, the control plane needs to be hooked up to the message queue, right, in order to submit tasks to its like, you know, the multi the the agents or the other things that are connected to to the system. So um, the control plane needs to be aware of everything that is uh, in the multi-agent system. So like, as I said, I'm going to have two agents, one that removes the AY um, part of the text, and the second agent corrects the first character. So when I'm building this control plane, it should know about these things. And the other thing is the orchestrator thing that I've talked about. So as I, as I mentioned a few times already, I'm going to be using query pipeline, but this will soon be done through some sort of like workflow orchestrator, um, just not there yet. But for now, this is the uh, object that will be, the it, it takes the task uh, that's submitted to the system and it will route it to whatever agent. And if we look at this, what, what this is saying is that, okay, if I get a task and the task is a translation task from Pig Latin to regular text, it's going to submit it in this in, in, through this chain. It will first submit the task uh, or subtask to the remove AY agent, and then it will go to the next correct uh, first character agent. Okay, so that's the pipeline, and, and you know we just wrap this on this sort of orchestrator object, and this orchestrator is sitting within our control plane here. Okay, so the control plane needs to be connected to the message queue. It's also a service; it needs to you know be exposed, um, and it has this orchestrator object here. Okay, so <clears throat> that's the control plane. And now what we could do is we could build these other agents here. So let me just do a quick actually copy of these guys. And fix them in. Actually, I think what I'll do is this. This is better. And then I'll have so that's double. And I need a decorator. Oh, I see. This thing what I'm about to paste in is definitely not needed. I'm pasting it in um, because it's a live demo. <laughs> I don't want things to run after. Uh, but what, what this thing was doing is just something silly. I was just trying to demo a sort of situation where you have bottlenecks in your agents. And so what I was doing with this bit was adding a random startup time for each agent. So like, uh, an agent gets a task, then like I was fictitiously saying, oh, you've got some random startup time before you actually start executing, just to give it a, a like a, a, a fake sort of, um, you know, bottleneck type of experience that you can control through simulation. But when you're building this out, you definitely don't need to do anything like that, of course, right? Oops. Okay. And then I'll... You know, speak on this again more slowly after. Let me just do this. Okay, so let's take a look again as to what we've got. Uh, first of all, copy this. And so basically, as we did with the control plane, it needs to hook up to the message queue, right? So I'm just importing the message queue here again, actually, that we've established in the mes message queue module. But it just needs the connection parameters. Oh, what is this? Yes, OK. Uh, 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 uh. 
Okay. So let's just look at the four tech bits here. So essentially this, again, this agent, what I want it to perform is the removal of the AY suffix in the pig Latin uh, text. And, and in the way to build an agent in Llama index is essentially you, you, you build out the tool and we've got this uh, abstraction called function tool that is able to build a tool from any function. <coughs> so you could provide the sync version of that function, or you could, and you can also provide the async version of that function. So <coughs> what this is is just that logic. It gets some text, and then for each uh, like word or token in that text, it's removing the ay suffix. So it's going uh, everything but the last two. Um, uh, characters there and so now you build that tool and then here is our uh, way that we build our agent so from tools you provide the tool give the provide the LLM um, and then you know you can also customize the system prompt that way and then this is our agent so this is this stuff right here is purely llama index this is how you build an agent within llama index where it gets into llama agents is this piece here uh, where you you have to define your 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 message queue you wrap that agent in an agent service you connect it to the message queue um, and then of course you provide like the connection parameters for that service as well this here uh, uh, that I'm sort of just extracting this app this is a fast API app so this is the the agent service that you can actually uh, expose so when you wrap this agent with that agent service, you can pick, take out that app, you can customize it, and, and you can launch it, right? So I'm launching it with the Uvicorn here, right? So that's the remove AI, AY agent. <clears throat> um, the other one thing I wanted to talk about, I don't know if we'll actually get to um, deploying this, but I do want to add um, the one thing which was, the human in the loop. So this is kind of going to be something that is somewhat quasi-functional, unfortunately. What I could do perhaps is, I don't know if you guys have like a, uh, an email subscription uh, type of thing, Amir, where I can sort of share out materials after. Yeah, I could put them on a Slack. Oh, OK. Yeah, so then I could actually make this thing functional after, and then you guys can and push this up to our a GitHub so that you can review it if you like. Um, but what I'm showing you next is a human in the loop service. So okay, I don't want that. Um, and let me just put it here. Hold on. So by human in the loop service, I mean like when there's a task getting um, submitted to the multi-agent system, we've got an orchestrator, right? Uh, that this doesn't exist yet. Uh, that should exist later. Um, and, and, and the orchestrator can decide as to where the the task should should go, right? And what we can do is we can um, implement a human in the loop service component uh, that can be routed, that can get tasks from the orchestrator. You know, one one pattern that you might want to do within human in the loop is like validation of a task, right? So an agent does a thing. And you might route it to a, the human in the loop service for, for validation. Or it might be that any sort of task related to a certain subject should be always routed to a human. There was this one toy example that I had where, like, super toyish. Um, but, like, you were doing, for example, Pig Latin translation. And then any task submitted to the system that has to do with math would just be routed to the human, right? So there was a front end where I've got some Gradio app and I'm asking like, you know, submitting regular tasks that the agents can handle that just gets routed to the agents and you could see it sort of get submitted and in progress and completed. And then anything that I said about math, like what is one plus one, for example, that task would then get submitted to the human in the loop service, right? <coughs> and and then it would you know require uh, a sort of uh, interaction from the human. Now, the thing that is sort of special for, for us, which allows us to, to um, facilitate that human in the service loop is if you, if you think of the human 
in the service loop that exists today and even early on with Llama agents was that we were looking, we were depending on this input function, right? This input function in Python. Um, that is a little bit restrictive, right? In terms of like the human in the loop services that you, you want to, to build. Ideally, you, what you want to do is hook this up to some sort of front end, right? Or um, for a human person to come in, log in, and, and sort of handle these tasks. So the way to build a human in the loop service uh, within Llama agents is you need to define this human input function, which will take in some prompt and then expect uh, a human to provide an answer and output a string. The default to this human input function is, is this built-in function, right? But in the app that we're trying to build is I'll have a gradial front end and uh, the human should get uh, the should have the ability to see the the task that it needs to complete, and also it needs to enter the input right. So that input built in just doesn't work for us. So what you can do is you can define this is what I've got here, essentially a function that will allow me to hook into a, a Gradio app uh, and interact with it, so that human can provide that input through that through that, through that Gradio app. Um, but yeah, I'm looking at the time. So what I'll do is I'll finish this app, I'll push it to GitHub, and I will share it with Amir for folks for, for you guys to get. Sounds great. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely put it on a slide, but also send it to anybody who signed up for this session. Um, can we spend a few minutes inside the control? Yeah. The plane, was it called? Yes. Sorry, what did you want to call it instead? He said you I like... wanted to call it the exchange because to me when exchange. I think of, okay. yeah, I think of control plane like I, I think of like Kubernetes land and like the ability to um, you know stand up multiple replicas and like it like it it just does a bit more than what we are doing. Obviously, it doesn't need to conform to that definition. Yep. I just feel like it just <laughs> it doesn't exchange. You know, can we take a step back and tell us? what is this file doing because i think I, I i lost you a little here yeah so what this file is doing or what is the control plane doing or both both <laughs> okay so Sorry. let Zoom. me then yeah. start with what we are doing with the control plane right so mm -hmm. essentially the task comes in and it, the, the entry point is our control plane i see okay it doesn't get submitted to the message queue directly it gets submitted to the control plane mm -hmm. Um, and, and then uh, the control plane will then figure out where, which of these services it should route to, right? So it will create a new message uh, that is routed to either secret agent, funny agent, or human, a human agent, um, and it will submit it to the message queue. And then these guys are listening for the messages that it, it can handle. Um, okay. So once that is once they are done finishing their work, then they get submitted back to the message queue, but it's being directed to the control plane, because then the control plane knows where to orchestrate the next thing. So for example, if this was the pig Latin example, right? This would be a y agent, the one that removes the a y suffix. This agent removes uh, this the, or corrects the first character. So when a task comes in for translation, the control plane would route that message to this agent here. Mm -hmm. It would do its work. It would get, you know, submit its result back to the control plane. And then the control plane would be like, okay, cool. I need to go next to this one. And then it, it would get that task. It would finish it. And then we would have the completed, sorry, it would then go back to the control plane. It would have the completed translation. The control plane would just then route it to the final task consumer whatever that is. OK. So am I correct to say that the control plane is doing task decomposition, task assignment, and then task update? Yeah, exactly. It does all of that. Yeah. OK. Does it do anything beyond those? Um, no. No. It, that's exactly right. It does that for now. Got it. OK. And what does orchestration mean here? Is is it just assigning tasks to the right agents? That's right. Yeah. So it gets a task in, it splits it, like it does the planning, 
plus the subtask uh, decomposition, and then orchestrating that task to the right agents. Right. Are there scenarios where the plan needs to change based on the observations that one of the agents make? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, I I definitely think there are real world scenarios where that exists. Mm -hmm. um, what that would how that would handle in Llama agents right at this point, it probably cannot handle that. Um, yeah, so what it probably should do at that point is uh, it should like yeah you probably need some sort of intelligence layer sitting here on the control plane and continuously assessing whether or not the plan that it's laid out initially is still suitable yeah. uh, and if not then oh i guess it is kind of doable it can either create a new plan based on the current context Right. And then start executing and do the whole thing again, or continue on with the same the the plan that it originally established. Yeah, it it what comes to mind is some version of chain of sorry tree of thought, yeah. <laughs> where you know there are a bunch of potential plans, and it is start executing on one, but midway it might have to backtrace and go down another route, etc. Yeah, that that's. I, I think that's an interesting thought, and then definitely that would make a, a lot more sense of having again these things sort of distributed um, right. as microservices because you could test out multiple different trees, yeah. right, at once. Could you do yeah. something where like the the plan kind of gets reviewed by one of the human loop kind of services before it kind of executes and orchestrates and all that? Absolutely. So the first thing that you would have to do is like in, in your plan, you could designate a, a very deterministic step, which is go to the human in the loop for uh, validation right. first, right? Um, and again, for that, like that, like you would need a more complex function than input, right? Yeah. Ideally, yeah. these human in the loop services are actually exposed to some sort of front end. Yep. Yeah. So maybe as the last question, uh, and then we can stop recording and have a little more discussion. Um, the language that is used in the messages, is it only natural language or do you enforce any other structure, like any type of domain specific language or do you enforce like JSON, et cetera? Because yeah. AI and you know Autogen go really out and say natural language everywhere which I think is a very bad software design. But. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I think we're probably still in that uh, range of very bad software design of like handling um, natural language at, at this point in time. Hmm. Though I, I I don't think it's much of a stretch to submit tasks that have structure, different um, uh, structures of input, to be hmm. quite honest. Like it, it's just, as long as the, the only thing that is necessary is a means to represent that input um, that is serializable and being like able to send through the the message queue and, and get to to the uh, to each of the agents, right? To to be clear, I'm talking about how different agents talk to the message queue. Um, See what I mean? Like essentially in in, in Autogen, for example. Like they really emphasize the fact that agents talk to each other, talk to each other in natural language. Yes. So I is see. Is that the case for you as well, or yeah. do you enforce any other structure? I see. I, I think uh, maybe my understanding of Autogen is so, like, what, what I understand Autogen is like they just have like natural conversations. Correct. Right? Okay. Sure. Sorry, I should have clarified. Yeah, that's also my understanding of, the, of them. Ours is different in that they don't really speak to each other in terms of conversations in that way. Um, what the typical handoff is like, I finish my subtask. I don't even know you exist, other agent. The control plane is the other one, is what's uh, um, submitting the next route. Though we do have another thing, which is, um, which is like, I can have one agent, I can wrap this as a tool if you if you wanted to do direct conversation between the agents, it wouldn't be like a um, a conversation, but it would be like a tool call. Yeah. That secret agent would call funny agent as a tool. Um, yeah. That's one way for them to do direct conversation with long agents. 
I don't think that's a good design. So I'm glad that you're not doing that. All right. Um, I'm going to stop recording. Um,